Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this Friday look at how the Brexit media are spinning their Brexit related stories, I'm going to take a look at how the big three are viewing Johnson's refusal to implement one of the very few Brexit promises that he's actually in a position to meet cutting VAT on energy. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, this one's quite topical. The massive rise in energy bill has been an issue for a couple of months now. There are likely to be two more big hikes in the price cap this year. Conservative MPs in vulnerable seats have called for the government to scrap VAT on energy. Now for Brexiteers, surely should be a no brainer. Like throughout 2021, the Tory Brexit government struggled to point out the benefits of leaving the EU because at that point last year, we'd not only left the EU, we'd left the Single Market and Customs Union. Their Brexit had been delivered. Where were the benefits? Where were they? The only ones they could come up with were lies. Like, oh, vaccine rollout. Oh, yeah, world beating vaccine rollout, which was not. It was only possible because when we started it, we were still in the single market. We were still in the European Medicines Agency. We needed them to get approval for the vaccines to be using them. We didn't have our own system. But also, we've been overtaken by a lot of EU member states over the course of last year. So, you know, Boris Johnson's claims that, that we're the best in Europe at rolling out the vaccine is a lie. You know, then they tried pushing their trade deals as well. But there's been, and it's not just that the trade deals we've got are on worse terms than we had in the EU. Because again, you, 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 it's difficult to explain to that to millions of people. You can talk to them individually and point things out. But you can't do it to the whole country if the media are against you. But there were more bad headlines than good with those, especially when it comes to the impacts of the Australia deal on farming. You couldn't, you couldn't avoid the bad news there. But here's an absolute sitter for the government. Scrap VAT on energy. Can the government do that? Yes. Could they have done it if we'd still been in the EU? Not really, but I'm going to discuss that in a bit as well. You know, I mean, our energy bills wouldn't have soared like they did either because we'd still be in the single energy market. But there's no point in trying nuanced arguments in politics. Like I say, in, in public, unless you can go and talk to individual people, then it just doesn't work. And I'm not going to have millions of people watching this. The bottom line is, if the government scrapped VAT, they could have claimed it as a Brexit benefit. It would be one little benefit buffeted by the tsunami of drawbacks, but it would be a benefit. Sort of. Bringing nuance back, the government would seek to reclaim the lost revenue by increasing taxes elsewhere. So actually people's overall household expenditure wouldn't necessarily come down. In fact, for many, it would go up and the government would make sure it's the poorest for whom it went up. But like I say, nuance doesn't work in public political debates. The government would argue, we have scrapped VAT on energy. We have only done this because we left the EU. Could we argue against that? No. <laughs> so why don't the government do it? I, I've seen articles in the Telegraph, the Express and the Mail, the pro-Brexit papers, all the pro-Brexit papers that I can stomach. I'm not I'm ignoring the sun here. And they were all perplexed to different degrees. They all pointed out that Johnson promised to scrap VAT on energy as a Brexit benefit. He promised it. In fact, the Express, which normally backs Johnson to the hilt, was positively threatening. Boris on brink. Clear betrayal of Brexit voters who feel lied to could topple the PM, they said. Now, their article begins with a lie, saying that the EU introduced VAT on energy in the 90s. Not true. VAT on energy was introduced by our government. VAT is not an EU tax. It doesn't go to the EU. It's a domestic tax set by the government. What the EU did say when it was set up in the interest of level playing field is that member states could set VAT on various things, but there were minimum rates. So you could you could raise it as high as you liked, but not go below certain rates, depending on what it was, that there's different rates for different things. The minimum that the EU set for energy was 5%. But our VAT was made higher than this under the Conservatives. It was the last Labour government that reduced it to 5%, but they couldn't go below EU rules. But it is an EU rule 
that you don't go below this with one proviso, and this is what's important. If you join the EU and you have a VAT rate on something that's below their minimum, you keep it below that minimum. There are some pro-Brexit groups trying to push the claim that VAT was only applied to energy in the UK in 1993. Now, it is true in one sense, but it is misleading because they're trying to link this with the EU. VAT was actually applied to energy in 1973, but it was applied at the zero rate, so it was just an administrative thing. You know, technically there was VAT on energy, but it was zero, so you didn't pay it. And there it could have remained, because the EU has, has no rules on raising VAT, even if it's below the floor when you join. This is why there are some member states that have lower or even zero VAT rates on some things where there's a higher rate set by the EU because they were at that level before they joined and so they get to keep it. But the Conservatives under John Major raised VAT to 80%, therefore above that minimum floor. Now, if they had never raised our VAT rate, it could always have been zero, whether in or out of the EU. But it wasn't just the Express lying. The Telegraph also lied to make their point. They lied about the strength of the economy, citing the ONS saying that GDP growth last November put us back above pre-COVID levels of GDP. Now, there's a, there's a statistical point at which it is true. The ONS have indeed said that, but they are comparing November with February in doing so. In terms of annual GDP, we are still below pre-pandemic levels because you don't really compare November with February. You don't have the same level of productivity throughout the year. In fact, the productivity in November is expected to be way higher than in February. But the Telegraph is trying to argue that the strength of the economy gives the government leeway to introduce this tax cut. Now, this argument, whether true or not, and it's not, is important. See, when the government sets its tax rates, it's doing so based on how much it expects to draw in from all sources, matched to get what, against what it needs to spend. So it has this idea of what it needs to spend, right? This is what our spending plans are. And then we need a little bit extra in case something happens. Obviously, if it overestimates its tax revenue, if it overestimates how much it expects to get from certain tax sources, then the government will get a shortfall and they will be then forced into one of two things, either an increase in taxes because they're running short of funds, which looks bad, is not going to be painted uh, positively in the media, or they'll have to increase borrowing, which looks less bad, but is still an indicator of poor economic handling, unless, of course, there were an unexpected emergency, you know, like COVID, but, but this year we're not expect. well, obviously it would be unexpected if it hit us this year, but if it doesn't happen, it just looks like you can't handle the economy. But if you underestimate what you will draw in from taxes, then you're going to end up with more taxes than you expected that you planned for. You know, you can pay for your spending plans and then you have some left over. The Telegraph are arguing that this is the case. And so the government can afford to cut VAT on energy and still afford their spending plans. Now, if the government agreed, they would have made the cut. I don't think they're ideologically opposed to the cut. The fact that they aren't doing so means that they don't agree. They don't agree that the economy, economy is as buoyant as being claimed. The Daily Mail reported that Johnson didn't want to make the cut because it would also help people who could afford the price increases. I mean, OK, I think it's a bit crass saying that the government shouldn't help with a massive cost of, of living increase just because you can afford it. But I can certainly get on board with the notion of prioritising the main help to those who will not be able to afford it but he's got no plan to help those struggling either. He says he's going to come up with a plan, but the energy bill increase began two months ago. We've known about it for ages. If he doesn't have a plan by now, how are we going to be confident that he's going to have one imminently? We're not. But regardless of Johnson's thinking, or at least his stated thinking, what this still represents is another broken Brexit promise. And unlike the other broken promises, which were mostly inevitable because he was promising the impossible, this is a Brexit promise he has the power to keep. You know, the Mail also reported on Johnson's faux outrage at Labour for demanding the VAT cut when they campaigned against Brexit. Well, it's a damn cheap. You campaigned against Brexit. And now you're calling for this VAT cut. 
And they're just sat there going, yeah, we are. Why aren't you doing it? And the problem is, this isn't the opportunity for political point scoring that Boris Johnson thinks it is. Like, bear in mind, Labour are now promising to deal with Brexit, make Brexit work and all that tosh. But the point is that the Conservatives' main line of Brexit attack has been to say that Labour would reverse it against the will of the people. But that's a tricky position to adopt when you have the Conservative government refusing to follow through on a key Brexit promise. And it's not like they've got this great long list of other benefits they've provided. And then Labour are calling for this Brexit promise to be implemented. And Johnson has conceded massive ground here. He's in a no-win situation now. If he now cuts VAT, Labour will say that he's just implementing Labour policy. Now, although Johnson promised it before Brexit, he's also refused to put it in practice and really stuck to his guns so far. Of course, if Johnson is forced to cut VAT, it won't be Labour pressure that does it, pressure from his own MPs. But Labour will be able to say that they pushed the policy and the Conservatives only applied it belatedly after they argued for it. Labour's pitch to the electorate would be that the Conservatives had no intention in letting the country show the benefits of Brexit, that it was all for them. Whatever happens now, the Conservatives will have conceded a Brexit point to Labour. If they continue to refuse to make good on the promise to remove VAT, Labour get to say that only they have policies to help ordinary working households with these rocketing bills. If the Conservatives belatedly adopt even part of the policy, Labour will still get to bash them because if all they do is cut VAT, that actually isn't going to make much of an impact on the, on the energy bills. You know, Labour will say, well, what about the rest of our policies? And the government won't go along with those because that means taxing the rich. You know, so Labour will get to say, first of all, this one thing you did was only under pressure from us. And, and in the meantime, the Brexit papers that have been desperately fishing around for some benefits to sell, their readers seem to be aghast <laughs> that Johnson is not giving them this very obvious one when he himself promised it. It's like... Well, now's the time for the VAT cut. Like, they might concede, if you'd have just cut VAT right from the start, most people wouldn't have noticed it was just a thing that happened and they wouldn't really notice. But now that it's in the news, now that people are focused on their energy bills, here's your opportunity to sell Brexit. Cut the VAT. Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? They're screaming at him. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.